Okay, check this out. Each human foot contains 72,000 nerve endings and 26 bones that help us stand upright and walk. It also has 250,000 sweat glands that can produce up to half a pint of sweat every day. P.U. Bones in the feet continue to develop and mature until we're 21 years old. But as we grow older, the circulation in our feet is not as good as it once was, so we may need some help keeping them cozy and warm. One of the easiest ways to take care of your feet is by using pepper. All pepper contains a component called capsaicin. When you eat something with this ingredient, it increases blood circulation in your body. So adding chili pepper to your favorite meal is a great natural way to warm your entire body, including your feet. This is also why it's better to stay away from spicy foods on a hot summer day. When capsaicin comes in contact with the skin, it causes the blood vessels to dilate. This improves blood flow and provides warmth. The heat gradually increases over time, but in some cases, this warming sensation can happen immediately. This life hack is especially useful during extreme cold. If you've ever tried a lot of things to keep your feet warm during winter, but none of them have helped, try this one out. Sprinkle chili pepper powder on your feet or into your socks and get it spread across the feet and toes. This simple action can help to improve the quality of your sleep. Be careful with the amount, though. If you use too much, it might get a little too hot. At first, half a teaspoon per foot should be enough. And then gradually increase the amount until you find what works best for you. Your feet will definitely thank you for looking after them. But there are a few downsides to covering them with chili powder. It'll probably turn your white socks pink and make your feet orange. And your feet will also absorb the smell. If you don't like the smell of chili, you might want to cover them with blended garlic mask instead. It'll warm your feet and help to heal wounds. And if by some chance a hairy monster comes by to eat your feet, the smell of garlic and chili powder might be enough to put them off. Milk and honey can be used in another homemade beauty routine for your feet. Put your feet in a bowl with warm water and add one glass of warm milk. Then add one to two tablespoons of honey and up to six drops of essential oil. Lemon, pine, or cypress would be perfect. After half an hour, your feet should feel fantastic and soft. If you have hardened skin on your feet, you might like this recipe. Take a bowl of warm water, add two tablespoons of white clay, two tablespoons of liquid soap, and a spoonful of ammonia. Leave your feet inside the bowl for about 20 minutes, and then moisturize them with cream. As a result, the skin will become smoother and more resistant to damage. Now, if you don't want to use so many ingredients, try an oatmeal bath. Just pour 1-2 to two glasses of oats with an equal amount of boiled water and let it steam for about 20 minutes. Next, stir the flakes in a bowl of hot water and put your feet in for up to 20 minutes. Oatmeal should soften the skin and help repair dry skin for foot file treatment. Starch can do a similar thing too, preventing cracks and making your feet softer. Take a bowl of warm water and add one large spoon of starch. Put your feet into the bowl for 20 minutes. This treatment is recommended before bedtime because it also helps your body to relax. Ah, The first shoes were invented approximately 40,000 years ago. The oldest known pair was found buried in a cave in Armenia. Despite how long we've been working to perfect them, though, we've yet to develop a perfect pair of shoes. To this day, people continue to get corns and calluses from time to time. Calluses are often formed on the soles of the feet because they're under the pressure of the whole body when you move. And it's not surprising. During a typical day, your feet bear the collective load of approximately two African elephants. And if you put on high heels, you increase this load by 75%. And if you actually see African elephants wearing high heels, then you've got a different kind of problem. Nowadays, high heels might be considered a feminine accessory, but initially, they were popularized by Persian males. Warriors wore them on the battlefield in order to look more masculine, and women adopted this high heel trend soon after. Calluses are nothing more than thickened areas of the skin that form due to friction or pressure. In most cases, they can be healed at home. But if you've been wearing uncomfortable shoes that have rubbed your feet all day, turmeric can help relieve pain and speed up the healing process. To make a turmeric paste, Take 1 tablespoon of turmeric powder and 1 or 1.5 one tablespoons of honey. Make a thick paste and apply the paste to the callus. Leave it exposed to the air until the paste dries, then rinse it off. Apply this paste twice a day. Turmeric has healing and antibacterial properties that should heal a callus in just a few days. 
Masks and baths aren't the only spa treatment you can create at home. You can also massage your feet with items from your kitchen. Fill a plastic bottle with hot water and close the top. Put the bottle on the floor and roll it with your foot, pressing lightly until you feel your muscles begin to relax. You can also do the same thing with a tennis ball, a hard apple, or an onion. This exercise is a great way to relax your nervous system and prevent flat feet. If your feet are tired after walking, you can massage them with a chilled tablespoon. Put ice in a spoon, wait till it's cold, and then slide the back of the spoon along the surface of your feet. While a regular pedicure might seem unnecessary and extra, it can actually bring some health benefits for both men and women. The foot massage improves circulation, while professional nail shaping and trimming prevents problems such as ingrown toenails. And, of course, it's always nice to look down at your toes and see that they are tidy and beautiful. I know I do. In many warm countries, nail salons use special aquariums with several hundred fish as part of the pedicure process. Fish known as Gerarufa don't have teeth, and its mouth is just perfect for clearing the dry skin off of human feet. They swim around like a tiny vacuum cleaner and clean things up. But in some areas, like the UK or some parts of the USA, this experience is banned because it's considered unethical. Also, fish aren't disinfected after each client, which increases the risk of spreading infections. Therefore, before purchasing this service, it'd be wise to ask the manager for a document confirming that their practice is legal. If you prefer to take care of your toenails at home, make sure to cut them straight across to avoid ingrown toenails. It also prevents nail irritation and inflammation. Growing your nails too long increases the risk of various nail problems, so try to cut them at least every 6 to 8 weeks. If you've ever wondered why your feet can be so ticklish, it's because they're filled with hundreds of thousands of nerves. The nerve! The tickle response can vary from person to person, but some people have feet that are naturally more ticklish than others. Scientists believe that this trait has genetic links. They also confirm that tickling feet can bring benefits to your health because it generates a sense of well-being and reduces anxiety. But not all people in the world enjoy treating their feet or even looking at them. Some live with a unique condition known as podophobia. The sight of feet invokes extreme revulsion, irrational fears, and even uncontrollable anger. People with podophobia can get upset by seeing the pictures of feet, conversations about this body part, and even reading about it. In some cases, podophobia can make people struggle with touching their own feet, putting on socks, and washing their legs. Scientists don't know the origin of this phobia, but professional therapy helps patients to reduce anxiety. As for me, I just try to keep my foot out of my mouth most of the time. 